All right, everybody, and welcome back. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and do an update on the tank. Um, yeah, there's been a lot of things going on in the past couple weeks here since I last did the, uh, the video, um, or my last update that I did with you guys. So a lot of things has changed. We got, I still got some corals that are that are looking a little banged up here. I got some that I've ended up uh, chopping up and getting them moved around, but. I'm going to go ahead and get into all of that with you guys here and let you know what's really been going on with the tank. Um, things are right now on a uh, upward swing. Uh, not everything was so great a couple weeks ago. So let me see, where can I get started here? So let's talk about the easiest thing to talk about. So every one of the tanks, this guy, that guy back there, uh, powder blue, the koi, um, or I'm sorry, the scopus, the scopus, they all ended up with ick from the, um, the mimic tang that was in here. Put them in, and as you guys know, I did the mirror trick, everything was fine, life was good, but out of, at some point, this guy, he didn't like what was going on and he just kept them in a corner which then stressed out all the other fish because of whatever was going on between those two fish um it stressed everybody out the mimic got ick uh obviously the ick came off of him because nobody in here had it for a while until i put the mimic in the mimic uh released ick whatever the case may be or the fish got all stressed all of them usually have ick on them it's just not visible so the stress caused everybody to get sick I was able to visually see it, therefore we had to get that problem resolved. Thankfully though, my little MVP over here, the uh, cleaner ass, he went to work, got everybody all cleaned up. I was able to catch the Mimic Tang, get him out of here and put him into a more of a, uh, like a hospital tank. I put him in my frag tank so that way he doesn't, he's not too, too much bothered there by any other tangs and life's good for him. So he's doing all right. He'll probably come back in here once I can get him all beefed up and get him eating properly and things like that. Cause he, he really stopped eating. He got real skinny, um, pinch belly, everything. He just was not looking the greatest. So hopefully I can get him back into full health and uh, get him back over here. Uh, if not, I'll deal with it. But with that out of the way, we got the egg problem solved. Um, I was noticing, obviously, you guys, I talked to you guys about the corals not looking great. Some of them were dying. Some of them just look bad. Uh, everything looks visually great. I mean, all the colors are there, but they're not where I know they should be for a lot of these, these acros and everything else. The SPS, um, all the LPS are doing fine. Some of the LPS are a little bleached. This guy in the back, that's a little bleached out. And move. Oh, here we go. And uh, this one here is also a little bleached out. So I ended up um, sending off an ICP and I got that back. But in the meantime, I decided to go ahead and purchase the HANA checkers for the nitrates and the phosphates and everything. And just, you know, for myself, see what's going on. Because the only nitrates and phosphate checkers I've had were the colorometer ones, ones where you got to be like a a whole color wheel expert to figure out what shade of blue it is or what shade of green it is against a little white sheet of paper. That wasn't working out for me, so I kind of dished a lot of those kind of tests there. Um, I knew something was wrong, but everything else that I was testing for was coming back okay. Um, alkalinity came back okay, calcium came back okay, um, salinity came back okay. So what else could it be? I was running GFO and carbon, but in one of those multi one of those one use bag things where everything's all bundled up inside. So when I got that test and ran the nitrates and the phosphate check, the phosphates came back at 0.9 and the HANA checker was just flashing away. That was a big, really big surprise. And so did the uh, nitrates. The nitrates peaked out at, at five. So both of those checkers pretty much told me that the numbers are so high, it can't test it and yeah, Go and save your save yourself, but everything looked okay. Nothing was completely stripped, dead, gone, or anything like that. So I decided, all right, let me actually 
start working on reducing the nitrates and the phosphates. And it wasn't just this tank, the cube tank was also reading some really high phosphates and nitrates. So both of these tanks, because I see them every day, I'm always feeding the fish. So yeah, <laughs> I had to cut back on the feeding and everything else that was going on. But eventually I did get my ICP back and I'll try to put some numbers up here to show you guys where the nitrates and phosphates were at and those things were were ridiculous so what I'm doing right now is I've got um, a separate carbon and GFO that I'm running on the tank uh, to try to bring everything down and get get the levels back where I would like for them to be um, and see what's going on there and really what was triggering me was that a lot of the cores that I was fragging from this tank and putting into the frag tank were doing 10 times better than they were here. So that was one thing that was kind of like, eh, something's wrong, let me go in and see what's happening. Um, the frag tank tests out perfectly fine at P at a phosphates of one, um, yeah, 0.1 and nitrates were at 0.8, so, or 0.08. So everything was working perfectly fine in the frag tank. Uh, there's not a huge bio load. It doesn't have a bunch of tangs and a bunch of fish. So therefore, and it is not getting fed every half an hour or so. Um, I'm just kidding. I don't feed this tank every half an hour. That'd be ridiculous. But nitrates and phosphates were so. So to fix the issue, we got the GFO, we got the carbon running. That's bringing the numbers down. I'm now at about um, 0.83 the last time I checked so we're coming down on the numbers uh, I didn't want to go ahead and strip the whole thing out so think about the past two weeks I've been running carbon GFO bringing things down slowly trying to get the corals back healthy the reason I bring that point up so on top of getting all those numbers and being completely freaked out I start checking the corals because hey what's going on so I start looking underneath and I started noticing bite marks on this one here and this one and this one and a couple more. The uh, Garf Bonsai was the worst off with the bite marks and that was the dreaded Acropora eating flatworms. Um, yeah, I have an idea of where they may have come from probably the Miyagi, I mean not Miyagi, but the Garf. But I am not 100% certain. What I do know is I am getting rid of them. And how, I, how I've been getting rid of those is just a multi-step process. Literally going in, um, pulling the corals that I can pull that are infected, dipping them, checking them for eggs, getting the eggs off, fragging them if I can, and just trying to bring everything or remove as much as I can. Another thing that I am using is this, which is the uh, Flatworm RX. It has worked um, out for me pretty well. That's a little bit different than the Flatworm Exit, where that one you don't need to cut off your uh, carbon and skimmer and things like that. You can leave everything work working and running and I literally, the first time I ran it in here, flatworms are just floating away, coming off, going bye-bye. So that's good. Um, fourth thing that I ended up seeing and having a big issue with in here was red bugs. So I had red bugs on a couple of corals. And that would also explain why the polyps were shrunken up on a few of them, especially my garf. So with the red bugs, that was a one step process. I still had some interceptor left over. Um, I went ahead and used the interceptor on the tank uh, after I did all the other treatments on everything else has been going on. Ran the interceptor, got everything all cleared up with the red bugs. Um, usually red bugs, you can kind of tell when they're no longer in the tank because some of the corals that are bothered by it, the polyps will start to come out 
it is going to be one of those things like everything that I'm doing right now is going to have to just go on long term um, until everything is gone. All the acro eating flatworms, all their their life cycle, got to get through that. The eggs hatching, the adults, the juveniles, all of that's got to go. So this whole process of me pulling the corals, dipping them, cleaning them off, um, yeah, that's probably going to go on for a while. Um, that's why I had the flatworm RX just to get rid of the adults as they come in. Um, you can run. You're not supposed to run it every, every day. So within a 24 hour period, you can do a dose. And then after that, you do another dose. So about once a week now, I think I'm just going to go ahead and dose the flatworm RX. Um, now I can kind of get rid of what I can that I cannot see in this tank. So let's see. Wow. That was a whole lot there with what's going on with this tank. Everything should be dead. For all intents and purposes, the, the numbers I saw from ATI and all of what's going on in here, none of this stuff should be alive. None of this stuff. So I'm kind of happy that everything is has held on through the uh, through all my fuck ups and are are doing okay at this point. The only thing I'm really liking here is that. I got a piece of my Monty in there that's coming back. Um, so that's good. This whole, that whole bottom was actually covered with a Montipora and that all bleached and receded back and everything. So yeah, it, it's, it's gonna be a, a bit of a progress to try to get the color, the growth, everything back in line. Um, it's just gonna be a slow running process here. So GFO's in, carbon's in, Get rid of the flatworms, get rid of the red bugs, got rid of the egg. And gonna get this tank back rocking and rolling here. What I will say is that ever since I've been getting the phosphates down, I have been getting better polyp extension um, on some pieces. Others have changed colors and are a little bit, a little bit brighter now, obviously, because I'm reducing the nutrients, but you know, that's, that's where I, I was seeing them before when I first set this tank up was that everything was nice colors were were popping everything was glowing and obviously due to my husbandry and not keeping up with things it all declined but you know what we live we learn and then we test and then we find a solution so that is pretty much it for the update on this system uh, I'm going to go ahead and keep you guys up to date with everything else. The uh, reef brights are still on and they are still rocking and rolling. I'll probably do some par numbers on those once I get a chance and, you know, obviously get everything running smoothly here to be able to go ahead and do number tests and everything. But other than that, man, if you guys have any questions, uh, go ahead and shoot me down in the comments below and I will check you guys out on the next one. Peace.